cleanly. Patton head down. Anderson too. Those two running sharply. The Brazilian just gaining a little on Malcolm of Great Britain. Here's the first changer, but Wallace Spearman takes it. He's ahead. He's flying away from Usain Bolt. Patton has taken the US into the lead. Bolt now getting into a stride. But it's USA who will lead after the first two. Now it's uh, Carter for Jamaica and Gay for the USA. Gay bidding for a trouble as they come into the straight now. Gay gives the USA a lead. Leroy Dixon takes it. And Asaba Powell is too far down, even for him, surely. But watch the grey man come through this field. What a run by Asafa Powell, but the US had too big a lead. The USA win, Jamaica second, Great Britain in third place. Behind them is Brazil. Well, it finished perhaps in the expected order. Jamaicans thought they could challenge, but their third leg was too weak for that. Terrific run by Gay, terrific run by Spearman, but didn't Asafa Powell close down a long way in the final leg, Sean? Well, he did, and it was expected. You saw him start to run as he came off the first 30, 40 meters of that final leg. And then he didn't make any more impression. I thought he was going to swallow up the Americans in front of him. But uh, I have to say that Wallace Spearman, I thought, ran a great leg on the, on the back straight. Not a great changeover between him and uh, Tyson Gate. Okay, guys. See, that, uh, that's, that's one of my favorite things to watch. Like, that kind of speed, that kind of you know, patriotism, that kind of something you do for a country, like, I love it. Uh, but I, what I want to know, and I, I bet this is what everybody wants to know, is what's it like um, for an event like that, where you've trained your whole life for? What's the arrival to the stadium? What's that like? What's going through your head? What are you listening to? Who are you talking to? Tell me about the arrival to that stadium that day. Um, I think... the. It all starts when you're in the hotel, when you're getting ready to go. Yeah. Um, like maybe like 20 minutes before. I know me, can't speak for Tyson, but for me, I like to play last minute songs that remind me of my dad. Me, well, me and my dad used to kind of sit on top of the car and, and, and talk about life. Yeah. And so I, it reminds me of someone believing in me. So I would always listen to those songs that we listen to. And then on the way over, by the time I leave the hotel room, on the way over, I'm just, I'm in my zone by then. So, I mean, whoever I'm looking at, whoever I'm listening to, no matter what no one says, it's, it's kind of kind of bouncing off because I'm not really, I'm so in, in that zone of belief that nothing can get in. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, let's go. How about you, Tyson? Well, normally I'll, I'll be watching a movie, you know, preferably a funny movie, kind of keep my mind off the race because if not, I'll be in the hallway, I'll be doing my drills, doing my A skips, my B skips. I kid you not, I will just thinking about the race, going over it through my head too much. Yeah. You know, and you do want to do that. You know, you do want to kind of have some meditation also. Yeah. But you don't want to do it too much. We just overthink. So I like to relax, you know, uh, watch a movie. And, but once I get on the bus, that's when it kicks in for me that's when the nerves kick in when I'm headed to the stadium and you can see the stadium from a distance. That's when it kicks in. I'm nervous, I'm sitting there, you know, trying to be patient, but I'm excited. So it's just a bunch of different things going on all at once. Right, and when, how many people were in that stadium that night? Man, when, uh, that stadium is probably 70,000 people. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's crazy, yeah. you know. Um, mm -hmm. And when you hear them cheering you on, I guess the amazing thing about it is if you have family there, you can hear them in that stadium and find them, even if you don't know where they're sitting at. And I think that was the most amazing thing about being in that stadium. Wow, that's crazy. So you, as you guys got off the bus and entered the stadium, were you guys talking to each other? Yeah, when you're getting ready for the 4x1, that's, the, you know, the fun event, you know, the most exciting, you know. So you practice relay stick, so you have to talk to each other, you yeah. know. And sometimes we go one, two, three, stick, one, two, three, stick as we practicing so yeah. that's kind of some of the things we do yeah I think once we get off the bus it's it's I think it's whoever you gravitate to in that moment just yeah. because I mean everyone's scared in there and everyone's nervous so we're feeling like whoever you naturally kind of you naturally kind of gravitate to, and maybe sometimes people gravitate towards their coach or their agent it's whoever in that moment you it's, it's weird it kind of naturally happens where we'll find someone that's safe for us in that moment to kind of create some sort of safety to kind of get us grounded and say okay I, I, I got, I'm gonna have to do this yeah because in the moment when I'm getting off I'm thinking like what, what am I thinking what am I doing why am I even <laughs> what did I choose 
Yeah. How did I choose this for myself? You yes. know what I mean? I could just be at home just watching this on TV. That's right. And I just want to just get back on the bus and leave. I don't, because at that moment, that's when everything feels like I'm making a mistake. Yeah. And so naturally, something kicks in and you'll just find somebody who reminds you that it's okay. It just naturally happens. And for me, it was different every time. And I think when we was walking into the stadium, that's when I kind of had my hood on my head and I was kind of thinking like, dang, I don't, I don't know what's going to happen. So, and then sure enough, here comes Tyson and says, like, you all right? And I'm like, I didn't say nothing. And he was just like, you nervous? And I'm like, I'm nervous. And he was like, I'm nervous too. <laughs> and I was like. <laughs> I think that's so like. funny because I think the people watching this assume that Olympic athletes or professional athletes don't mm -hmm. get nervous. They just, this is their job. They just, there's no Not only emotion. just that, he had just won two gold medals before that race. So it was like, wait a minute, you're nervous? You just won two gold medals. <laughs> Did you, oh, you had already you won two gold medals yes, that sir. day? Yes, sir. Oh, my God. I was thinking like, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> he's nervous? Now I need I'm to nervous. be like leaving then if he's nervous. And you, know, you were the I'm rookie, thinking. right? You were the young guy. Yeah, because I'm thinking just like everyone else watching is thinking. Like, I'm thinking, I'm looking at him like as if, People watching will look at him like, wait a minute, he's not nervous, he just won two gold medals. Yeah. So that's the way people think. Yeah. So what, whatever everyone else is thinking, I'm thinking the same thing. We're all thinking the same thing. Yeah. And it's crazy, because everyone watching us thinking, no, they probably are so confident, they're probably prepared their whole lives for this. It's like, yeah, I prepared my whole life for it, but that don't mean I'm not a human being still. I still feel things. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right, and then so, so what happened once you guys got out there, so Tyson, you ran the third leg, correct? And then you ran the anchor leg, Leroy. Yes. Tell us about that exchange. Tell us about that passing to the baton. Well, uh, when I received the baton, um, to be honest, I didn't even get a clean exchange when I put my, because it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a blind handoff. So I may take 20 steps and put my hand back, and it should be there. Yeah. And I'm trusting the guy's going to get it in my hand. So when I first done it, um, I missed the target. So my hand's there, I hit his chest, and he was just patient, found my hand, and put it in. Wow. So once I got, I was a little nervous because I knew it was a slight fumble. So as I brought the, the baton around, I tried to stay relaxed. And I remembered from the prelim race when uh, we lost that round, when the world record holder, Safa Powell, passed Leroy up. Yeah. I mean, like he was just standing still. So I remembered that, and I was like, oh, shoot. I got to make sure I get Leroy to stick and get him down the street. So. I got him to stick. I gave him a push in the back, you know, just a nudge, <laughs> just, you know, to let him know, get on your high horse, you know, and that's kind of how it played out. Yeah. How about for you, Levi? So you're waiting. The yeah. first three legs go. You see Tyson running the turn. Mm -hmm. 80,000 people standing up. I mean, I'm seeing, first, I'm not, I'm seeing Tyson flying around the curve, actually. <laughs> His feet is moving so fast. I'm thinking like, oh boy. What are we going to do? So as soon as I take off, all I know is I felt, I didn't feel my body. I just was more just waiting for the reaction to feel the stick. As soon as I felt the stick, I didn't even, I probably took one step. And next thing you know, I felt a push in my back. And I'm thinking like, oh shit, I'm about to fall. <laughs> and if I fall, my mom is watching me, my dad, everybody's watching me. This is going to be really bad. I just got passed in the, semi, in the prelims. What? And all of a sudden, I just feel myself stumbling, and then next thing you know, I just gathered myself, and I just was running for dear life. And you took off. I mean, <laughs> at that point, my body was doing everything, not me. Right. My body was just naturally just moving. And then what was it like once he crossed the finish line, Tyson? You were, were you running up behind him as he was running? <laughs> Man, I was. But it was so <laughs> crazy because I was saying, go, go, because I remember the prelims when, when the world record holder was chasing him down, and that's what he was doing in the finals, but... He couldn't catch him this time. Yeah. Wow. And then once you guys crossed the finish line, all four of you together? Or was it you two together? Did the other two, two guys join you? Yeah, yeah. We, all, we all connect. Yeah. You know, we all connect with the flag. We all get an individual American flag to represent the country. Yeah. And then, you know, you pose for the camera. You yeah. know, when Take you your victory that, lap. Take that time to, you know, enjoy that moment. Yeah, it's such a big moment for, you know, America. You know, and it's such a big moment for a track and field all around the world, right? It's just really exciting. And that's why I love talking to people like you because I always relate athletics or whatever you're great at. If you're the best at something, 
that totally translates to other occupations. And you guys are learning that now. As you begin to retire from track, you're going to take this same excellence and bring it to the next, the next uh, phase of your life, the next yeah. occupation that you have. Because mm. you're so young when you're done with athletics. You know that you have this whole d different life. Mm. And you apply those same principles. And that's really why I want to talk to you guys today, because that's what people need to know. They need to know, look, when I'm finished with one part of my life, and I've reached the top, you can certainly reach it in another place too. You just apply the same principles. Mm -hmm. So thank you guys so much for coming on. Thank and uh, this is great having you here. Yeah, thank thank you. you. Yeah, you're welcome.